الحمد للہ رب العالمین وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد أيها الأحباب The mu'min should strive to be strong in iman. And one of the ways in which we can do that is by seeking refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking help, support, and assistance, putting our hope and our trust in Allah azza wa jal. Not in the graves, not in the awliya, the saints, not in the dead or the living saints. Not in our imams, not in our sheikhs, not in the rocks, not in the trees, as beautiful as nature is, but it can't offer us anything. All of this is from Allah. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's beautiful creation. Ayol Ahbab, the strong believer is better than the weak believer, but both of them have khayr, as the Prophet والسلام, said. So the person who exercises their iman, raising their iman, striving to do good, is in a better state than the one who who does uh, who doesn't do so. However, as long as they're both from Ahl Iman, then they both have good. And so, Ayol Ahbab, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and bless you to be of the strong believers and from Ahl Iman. And may Allah wa ta'ala bless us to die in a state of Islam. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya Ayol Adina Amanu wa Taqullah. O you who believe, fear Allah, His rightful, His uh, the give Him His right in fear, meaning doing the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and avoiding the prohibitions and fearing His punishment. And do not die except in a state of belief in Iman. And we ask that Allah blesses us to die in Iman because how many people have fell off? How many people do you know personally, especially if you've come to Islam, you've seen many people embrace Islam who have probably who have left Islam. At least I've, I've witnessed this many times. A large portion of the community where I'm from, uh, many people didn't make it. They didn't ground themselves in Iman. They didn't ground themselves in Tawheed. They didn't really understand what true Islamic monotheism is. Because if they truly understood that, they would have never left that for anything else. Ayul Ahbab Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu reported that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, a strong believer is better and is more lovable to Allah than a weak believer. And there is good in both. Cherish that which gives you benefit in the hereafter and seek help from Allah and do not lose heart and if anything in the form of trouble comes to you don't say if I had not done that it would not have happened but say Qadr Allah wa ma say that Allah did that what he had ordained and if opens the gate to the shaitan. Ayul Ahbab in that hadith, as we've mentioned on countless times, there's immense benefits for us. And it's a reminder for us because when we're struck with the qadr, qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the qadr of qadr Allah is, is in everything that we do, meaning everything is in accordance with the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the khayrihi wa shar. And as that's a part of Iman, as the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, that's a pillar of Iman. It's the sixth pillar of Iman. That you believe in the Qadr, the divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the good of it and the evil of it. Because you're going to be struck with both. You're going to be tested. And that's what's going to distinguish you between being the strong believer and the weak believer. The strong believer, that he's he or she, when they are tested, that they're going to, to go with that test. Meaning they're going to remain firm on their iman. That doesn't mean they won't be tested and tried with, with uh, different trials in this life. But they're still going to continue to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're still going to do their best to avoid disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's going to be the state of the strong believer. But the weak believer is going to be blown over by the fitna. At one point they may be strong in their religion. When a trial comes to them, it breaks them down. 
It breaks them down and they go from extreme to extreme. How many people have we seen who are known to be strong in the sunnah? At least this is what we, we, we believed of them. As soon as a fitna came, then they went with Ahl Bidah. They went with the people of desires and innovation. Or they became so weak with the principles of Islam and the principles of Ahl Sunnah that they began to just belittle aspects of the Sharia or belittle aspects of the minhaj or methodology of the Salaf of this Ummah. And this is because of the weak, of being weak in Iman. But however, as the Prophet ﷺ said, and there's good in everyone, there's, there's good in both, as long as, as they're from Ahli Iman, as long as they're, they're a believer. So adhere to those things which give you benefit. And what are those things, Ayyul Ahbad, that remind you of Allah? First and foremost, it's ilm. Read a lot. Listen a lot to Ahl ilm, to the people of knowledge. And try to study and sit in the study circles and, and at least take some time with your families and read and learn more about your religion. Go to the masjid. See what classes are being offered. And strive your best to benefit those things that will remind you of the hereafter. And seek help from Allah. And do not lose heart. Ayyul Ahbab, put your trust in Allah Azza wa Jal and do not lose heart. And that's easy to say on the tongues, but to put that in practice can be a challenge for us. That sometimes you feel as if you're getting beat down. You don't have the money for your rent. You lost your job. You lost your spouse. Someone died in your family. Whatever the situation may be, whatever the trial is that has befallen you. And that can weaken you and give you second thoughts. And that's why you have to seek refuge in Allah from the accursed shaitan. A'udhu billah min shaitan rajim And affirm your iman. Reaffirm your iman to Allah Azza wa Jal. Try to spend some time reading the Quran. Try to make extra dua. Supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, make sujood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Extra sunnah prayers. And ask Allah for ikhlas with thabat ala sunnah. Firmness and sincerity to him on the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And do not lose heart. Don't give up on Allah. And Allah will not give up on you. Allah will be there for you. And that's why that's where that tawakkal ala Allah is. Tawakkal ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because as you're going through the tr trials and tribulations, sometimes you, you think no one knows or no one has experienced what you're experiencing. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you re relief. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives relief after every difficulty. Verily there is relief after every difficulty. So don't lose heart. And if anything has befallen you, for whatever trial has befallen you, don't say, if I had only done such and such. It wouldn't have happened uh, this way or that way. But Ayyul Ahbab, this was ordained for you. The decisions you made, it was already written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not meaning that you didn't have any choice, you didn't have any free will. No. You have the intellect, but you don't know the outcome. And the outcome has happened. And there's nothing you can do to change it. It's a part of the qadr of Allah Azza wa Jal. And it was written for you. So close that door to the shaitan. And this is easier said than done. We all fall into this. And may Allah forgive us. May Allah guide us. May Allah bless us to accept his qadr. And also beware, ayyul ahbab, from ihtijaj bi qadr. And this is when a servant begins to use the qadr as an excuse. This is what people do, and I had this is a real situation that happened to me, Ayyul Ahbab, to give you an example of what it means, ihtijaj bi qadr. That I recall once where I was at my place of employment, I was at a university in Saudi Arabia, and a student hit me in the parking lot. He was driving very fast and hit me a head on collision. And then 
all he could say the whole day, and it was in the midday heat, in the blistering heat in Saudi Arabia. Matter of fact, it was Ramadan, and I had a lecture of one of the ulama that I wanted to go to after Asa. And this person delayed me to such an extent we have to go to the police station. We had to do all these things. All he could say, Qadr Allah wa And what he was, he was right. It was Qadr Allah. But the way he, he mentioned it and the way he continued to emphasize he took no responsibility, as if it was just written for him to crash into me with recklessness. Yes, that was written. But you, as an individual, we don't know the outcome, so we have to take caution before we make any moves and actions. So the point being, don't drive reckless. Don't just do things and then just say it's the Qadr. Use the Qadr as an excuse. And this is also, there's an athar, I believe it was Umar, radiallahu ta'ala, who uh, a man was brought to him and he said, uh, he's brought before him and, and, and Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala was the Amir al-Mu'mineen at the time. And the man said he had stolen something and he was caught. And he said, oh, Amir al-Mu'mineen. He said, yes, I stole this. He said, Qadr Allah wa ma It was the Qadr of Allah. So he tried to make yeah, uh, yahtaj bi Qadr. He, he did exactly what we're talking about. He tried to use the Qadr as an excuse. What did Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu say? He said, yes, and it's the qadr of Allah that we will chop your hand off. So ayyul ahbab, be careful of using the qadr as an excuse for your recklessness and for your sinfulness and for foolishness. But be wise. Strive for your rizq. Strive to do good. Protect yourself from evil. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to be of the strong believers.